Thank you. Good morning, APAC. A very special good morning to everyone here from my native state of Florida. That's a big delegation. And a very, very special good morning to the 4,000 students who are here. Now, I'm pretty impressed. When I was a student, you couldn't have paid me to wake up early on a Sunday morning to listen to anyone speak. 19,000 people is also pretty impressive. That's actually the same number of people who watched Gonzaga and Oregon make it to the Final Four last night. I see there's a delegation from Washington and Oregon here as well. But you're all here because you know, as I do, that the APAC Policy Conference is the real place for March Madness. I mean, think about it. We each have to fill out a bracket. There's a lot of breakout sessions happening at the same time. You got to pick and choose what to watch. And in the next 48 hours, that's what you call missing a page to your speech. That's part of March Madness. We're going to pick and choose what to watch. And then, of course, then, of course, there are the big speeches that bring everyone together. In the next 48 hours, we'll hear from a champion of the remarkable friendship between Israel and the United States, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan. We'll hear from a true friend of Israel who stands for what is right time after time, no matter how difficult that stand is, Senator Robert Menendez. We'll hear from a woman who has finally brought some moral clarity to the United Nations, Ambassador Nikki Haley. Israel believes that armed with that moral clarity, we can finally get serious about the UN's anti-Israel bias and crack the UN's automatic anti-Israel majorities once and for all. Tonight, we'll also hear from a man about whom I can honestly say that the Jewish people and the Jewish state have no better friend Vice President Mike Pence. And of course, tomorrow, live from Jerusalem, we'll hear from a man I am proud to serve, a man who has the great privilege and awesome responsibility of leading the one and only Jewish state, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as opposed to that other less exciting March Madness, the greatest thing about APAC's policy conference is that we are all on the same team. Americans and Israelis, Democrats and Republicans, Likud and Labor and the other parties across the Israeli political spectrum, our team is committed to making the U.S.-Israel alliance stronger than ever. That is why I am honored to be here this morning to represent the people of Israel and to convey a simple message. Thank you. Thank you to Lillian Pincus, to Howard Kaur, to APAC's leadership, and to all of you who worked tirelessly for APAC to ensure that not only is the U.S.-Israel relationship strong, but that it also brings Americans together, no matter their party, no matter their background, no matter their faith. I know that today, bringing people together is harder than ever. That is why APAC's work is more important than ever. And that is why, frankly, Israel's gratitude is greater than ever. I also want to thank all of you who came from across the country to be here today. 
Thank you for caring enough and for being motivated enough to come here and learn about the challenges and opportunities facing Israel. And to thank you personally for working to strengthen the alliance between America and Israel. And ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the great challenges facing Israel and the United States, for the first time in many years, perhaps even many decades, there is no daylight between our two governments. Both our governments, both our governments recognize that foremost among those challenges remains Iran. We both recognize that the nuclear deal does not block Iran's path to a bomb and that Iran's appetite for aggression and terror has only grown since that deal was signed and since sanctions were removed. We also both recognize that the worst outcome that could emerge from the horrific carnage in Syria would be to effectively cede parts of Syria to Iran and Hezbollah. And we both appreciate that the rising tide of militant Islam, which has engulfed the Middle East, has also enabled a rare moment of opportunity to bring Israel and many in the Arab world closer together. In working together to thwart common dangers, there is a real prospect, a real prospect of building a genuine path towards reconciliation in the region, a path not based on empty hopes and dangerous illusions, but a path based on a clear-eyed understanding of shared threats, as well as common, a common desire for a safer, more prosperous, and more peaceful future. Ladies and gentlemen, during the visit of Prime Minister Netanyahu to Washington last month, it was clear that there was a meeting of the minds between our two governments on the great strategic challenge facing us. And that has made me even more confident that our alliance will get considerably stronger in the years ahead. You see the strength of that alliance every day. You see it when military assistance to Israel is fully funded at a time of great budget cuts and you see it when America finally finds its moral voice in defending Israel at the UN. You see it. You see it when an Israeli pilot climbs into the cockpit of an F-35, and when the Iron Dome, David Sling, and Aero systems shoot down incoming missiles. And you see it when our intelligence cooperation foils dozens, dozens of terror attacks across the globe. And when our cyber cooperation protects people and critical infrastructure in both countries. You see it when Israeli companies are conserving water and harnessing solar power in places across America. And when U.S. companies invest billions of dollars in Israeli technology that is transforming how we live. And you see it perhaps most of all in our rambunctious democracies, in our free-spirited debate, in our commitment to the rule of law and to the rights of all. Our remarkable alliance is anchored in shared values, buttressed by shared interests, and driven by a shared destiny. But this alliance has also been fortified and nurtured for decades by APAC and by people just like you. Yet I am confident that even better days are still ahead. And part of my confidence comes from all of you. You stand 19,000 strong and proud in this hall. But I know that you represent so many millions of Americans who stand strongly and proudly behind Israel. So thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting Israel. And thank you for the work you do, you personally do, to make the U.S.-Israel alliance greater than ever. The ball is tipped. For those basketball fans out there, the ball is tipped. Here you are. Enjoy the conference.
We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double chai, or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.